Welcome back Year 11 to another Media Studies revision video. This one will be focusing on how to answer the questions in Paper 1, Section A, which is everything related to TV. So let's get started. Section A of Paper 1 consists of five questions. The first three directly relate into the clip that you will be shown in the exam. The final two will focus more on wider issues relating to the TV programmes around industry, audience and context. In this video, we are going to be breaking down question one, which is worth five marks in total. The question will focus solely on media language and will test your ability to be able to analyse the clip you have been shown in terms of sound, camera work, editing or mise-en-scene. What's great about question one is that it will always be structured in exactly the same way. Analyse how blank is used in the extract to create meaning. Refer to at least two examples from the extract in your answer. The only aspect of the question that will change is the blank, which could be replaced with sound, mise-en-scene, editing or camera work. <laughs> so let's break down that question a bit further. We've got a key word there straight away, analyse, which means you're being asked to deconstruct or examine the clip in detail. Another key part of the question here is to create meaning. Meaning essentially means what does the audience interpret from the media language that has been used. So for example, if the question is asking you how camera work has been used to create meaning, you could say, the high angle suggests that the character is weak or in a vulnerable position, which makes the audience feel sympathy for them and understand they are in a dangerous position. This is essentially what we've been calling the connotations. The last key part of the question is that it is asking you to refer to at least two examples from the extract. Therefore, you must do this in order to gain the maximum marks available. I just want you to know I'm totally up for this. Now, before we go ahead and look at some clips, it is worth pausing the video here and taking a look at your media language cheat sheet to revise over the key terms associated with each area of media language. It is also worth remembering that in the exam, you will only be shown one clip and it could be from either of the set products we have studied, the Avengers or Cuffs. So I'd recommend that you watch each episode fully and practice analyzing different segments so that you are well prepared. Mm-hmm, for all y'all talkers up in here. It's time to keep it down right now. Shh. So let's look at a clip from Cuffs and the timestamp is from the beginning, zero to three minutes and 29. We're gonna analyze it for question one and we're gonna start by focusing on camera work. So let's roll the clip and see what we can find. So first of all, we're starting out here with an establishing shot that is an extreme wide shot. So in terms of how that creates meaning, essentially it helps the audience to establish where they are. Remember that this is episode one, so it's the first time the audience is experiencing the world of this TV program. So it's helping us to establish that we are by the sea, so this is a coastal town, and those people that live in the UK may be able to identify this as being Brighton. <laughs> All patrols, all patrols, immediate graded call for reports of an assault. Here we've got an aerial view or sometimes known as a bird's eye view looking directly down at the town and actually if you look very closely you can see that it's tracking a car which we can with the sirens kind of make the connotations of this being a police car. So it's given us the meaning that maybe there's essentially some action happening here and that possibly we're looking at this or viewing this from some kind of surveillance. <laughs> An office with the most demanding of social and moral responsibilities. Here we have an over-the-shoulder shot from behind the police officer, so essentially we're getting the same perspective as the police officer as if we are in their shoes. There is a nice bit of pull focus here, so when you first arrive we don't actually see what's written on the sign, and then we have a pull focus away from the police officer to the sign to help us understand that this police officer is walking into a naturist beach. It could also be considered a tracking shot because it is tracking behind and following the police officer. Again, putting the audience in the police officer's point of view. Here we have a handheld camera being used, so it's quite shaky and it helps to portray the kind of chaos and the panic and confusion that's happening at that moment in time. Responsible. Oh. Respectful. Oh. Behave yourself. Guys, no comment. They will have to remain. Here we have a lot of medium close-ups to the facial reactions from the nudist, 
the guy from the stag party and the police officer helping us to understand the situation of each character and the animosity between the three so we're starting to see their reactions and then it cuts to a wide shot to help show the fight that is about to start between the nudist and the guy from the stag party and it helps us to understand the situation of all the characters and the onlookers and what's actually happening <laughs> Ensuring cohesion and security. What's interesting about this police officer is that we are shown him through a series of close up and medium shots that are quite static, obviously using a tripod. This helps to reinforce the meaning that he is probably of a higher status in the police force and therefore to be taken more seriously. <laughs> There's also here a nice contrast between a high angle and a low angle shot showing that the guy that's being currently tackled to the ground is in a weak or vulnerable position in comparison to the police officer who is obviously in a status or position of power and is trying to rectify the situation. <laughs> There are also quite a lot of extreme close-ups used on this police officer to give the sense of who he is and help to establish his character. So straight away we are shown his badge and we get to see that he is actually the superintendent and he is the person that is in charge. The close-up to the white gloves might also help to reinforce his high-powered status. <gasps> So as you can see there's lots that you can talk about in terms of camera work and actually you only need to find two examples that you'd like to talk about in depth. Oh how lovely. So let's move on now to looking at how you would then structure an answer in response to a question like this. Now remember at the beginning of the exam you will be given three minutes to read all of the questions. Make sure you note down which area of media language you need to focus on in the question. Do not veer off into a different area as you will not be awarded any marks. Big mistake. Big. Huge. You should try to write about two paragraphs in your response, one for each example. They don't need to be overly detailed because you are only given this much space to write. However, it is important that you are using the correct media terminology in your answer. It's also worth noting that because this is a five mark question, you should try to spend five minutes answering it and not any longer. You can do it, it's all up to you. Okay. In terms of structure, you should try to use the point and explain structure. So you need to make a point by identifying the media language that has been used. Make sure you describe it in as much detail as possible. For example, you could say that there was a low angle camera shot used to focus on the police officer as he was tackling the perpetrator. The shot was also framed as a medium close up, emphasizing a strained look upon his face. This is much more detailed than saying a low angle camera shot of the police officer was used. I need details. You then need to explain how that creates meaning. For example, the low angle helps to portray that he is in a position of power and that he is in charge of breaking up the fight. It communicates his strength and authority, but alongside the medium close-up, it also conveys that this is not easy for him as his strained face highlights that he is struggling to maintain this power. So you can see how what we have analyzed translates into an answer. Now remember that I've only focused on one example from the clip. You would then need to move on to a second paragraph analyzing a different example from the same clip. And as you saw, there were lots for you to choose from. Is that clear? Yes, Drill Sergeant! So tips for revision for question one. Make sure you revise the key terminology using the media cheat sheet. Watch each episode in full so that nothing surprises you. Practice analyzing segments of each episode using a different area of media language each time. In this video, we've only focused on camera work, but you could be asked on the other three areas of sound, editing, or mise-en-scene. So make sure that you get familiar with practicing those three areas as well. And finally, practice writing out your responses by timing yourself, remembering to give yourself five minutes in total. All right, okay, let's take care of some business. <clears throat> so that's question one. In the next video, we'll be moving on to breaking down question two, which is worth a little more and requires a little more depth than this question. See you then.